Hello and welcome back to another installment of Pokey Fodder. And I want to continue with the theme that I started yesterday of hybrid decks. The deck that you see here is a psychic slash ghost slash dark type. And I know there's a lot going on. The deck was actually conceived by Care Bear and myself. We were brainstorming. He had watched yesterday's video. And I was like, man, I got to I got to revisit Malmar. And then, he, we, you know, we kind of went back and forth and he threw out a couple of ideas. And then I saw a screenshot that he screenshot that he posted up on Discord where he was going up against. I want to say it was a Cosmo deck and it was two turns, maybe three, four turns into the match. And his opponent just uh, just forfeited. So it was kind of funny there. But the deck ultimately is what Care Bear came up with. Even though we had kicked around some ideas. What is the guy that's got Lunala, which is, as everybody knows, a really nice solid attacker. It has the Oricorio Pau style. And what this is going to do is for your psychic types, it's going to give them plus one for attack damage per psychic type on the field we know malmar malmar is a dark psychic type so with the it's going to come out of the evolution from NK. it's going to move up to 80 base damage i have three chain levels so it's 83 and then we're going to add in power style on top of that which could potentially get me close to 140 damage with an evolved malmar we have Sableye, which is a nice support piece, nice tech piece, very difficult to knock out, um, leave status, which is going to allow other Pokemon to knock out wh whomever, whatever battles Sableye more easily. We do have Argy Vettel, which is going to stop my opponent's ghost type from moving over any of my dark types. And I do have three dark types between NK slash Malmar, Sableye, and then Yavetl. Also, with the Dark Mist, anytime it lands, my dark types are gonna gain plus 10 damage. So now, my evolved Malmar could potentially be doing an upwards of 150 plus damage. Absolutely insane. Not a lot is going to compete with that. And then we have Tapu Lele, which is going to do a lot of things in this deck. First of all, it is going to stop Tapu Koko from rushing. So between Yvetel and Tapu Lele, I have the Mega, uh, Mega Gengar Tapu Koko rush negated. It is also within two steps two spaces on my attack is going to negate my opponent's gold. And if you'll look, I am pretty susceptible to gold attacks. Lele and Lele placement. Yesterday I talked about setting your matchups. Lele's placement on the board is going to be absolutely key to the success of this deck. The plates I'm running are... Dark Energy, Phantom Energy, Double Chance, X Speed, Gold Block, and Max Revive. That's really all that I can say about this deck. I do have the potential of banishing Cosmo users if I come across Cosmo users. Although I, I will say I don't see a whole lot of Cosmo users anymore. I have some another deck that I'm working on for probably tomorrow's video. And the first two games that I played were coincidentally against Cosmo decks. So we do not have a Cosmo user. We actually have pretty much a, well, it's, it's a hodgepodge. It looked tropical at first, but upon further review, maybe not so much. See a lot more people running Grovile because Grovile is, is, um, it's viable. I'm going to trigger my dark energy. The only 
psychic type they have, my opponent has, is Mew. Dark Energy is also what most people forget about is when a, a dark Pokemon gets knocked out by a psychic, it actually just goes to the bench, which makes it a little more difficult to cycle through if I need to cycle something out of my PC. But because my opponent only has one psychic type, I'm not overly concerned about that. Also, because I'm not using a runner, I have to plate on my first turn. If I go first, if I go second, then I can play as normal. I went and reallocated Paul Styles wheel. I at first had it all into the purple, but I went back and adjusted that and put it into the three. What do we want to do? Nothing can really hold on to that. And since I don't really mind if NK gets knocked out, we're going to put NK out. But I went back and reallocated the damage to the roost simply because I typically use it as a goalie, power style as a goalie, and roost survives better, better survivability. Okay. We are actually going to just go a little aggressive. Actually, no. Hmm, this is interesting. Do I go... I'm actually going to double chance with Tapu Lele because I have chain levels over him and his gold is going to be negated. So I potentially could give him weight or just flat, flat knock him out and he is going to end up with the weight, which is actually nice because I can attack again if I land purple, it is going to knock out Zapdos. My opponent X speed, double chance, X defend, scoop up, max revive, and cold block. I don't see X Defend run unless it's on um, Bugbot. So naturally I see it quite often. We're actually just going to go for the knockout here. Perfect. Oh, and that was one thing that I didn't even mention. With Tapu Lele, when I attack, my Psychic types gain an extra star. So Moongeist Beam will win mirror matches when I'm attacking with Moongeist. Three stars to two stars. Very, very nice. And then Malmar, when he comes out here, will have a four star mass hypnosis. A lot to like with that. Okay. We are just going to drop Lele over to the side. The matchup against Mew is fine. Roost, perfect. That's exactly what we wanted. And I will bring out Malmar. I actually really like Malmar around my goal. And because Mew is a psychic type, Malmar is relatively immune to Mew's attacks. Relatively, not, not completely, but I can't get knocked out via gold to purple with Mew around. Another thing, as, as my opponent brings out, Parisian. Another thing that's great about Malmar is I choose displacement moves. So if I were to allow Verizian to work its way down to my goal and it were to attack into my Malmar, if I roll white and it rolls Typhoon Slash, I can just say, no, you are not going to slash me and I, I don't auto lose. 
where with most wide attackers you would lose in that situation. That is interesting. All right. And of course I land the purple. Not good, not good. Could have done better there. So, for example, if Oricorio gets knocked out here and I move Malmar over to cover my goal, if the Sceptile lands Stealth Hit, I can throw him over and then create a surround for my... Uh, for my where my opponent typically would not have taken this round, the, the hop open. He thinks he wants a piece of, of, of uh, Lunala, and he doesn't. He just thought he did. He will slide up. It hasn't max revived. I would expect Zapdos to come out here pretty soon. No, oh, he wants to go back with the subtile. Okay. Now I probably, that was probably a misplay. I probably should have taken for the second day in a row, I should have taken Sableye and moved Sableye over. Either matter. Unless I roll miss, I can't lose. That was an ill advised play on my opponent's part. Gonna regain my five on four advantage here. I'm gonna start applying pressure with Sableye. I think it's a good way to go. with that. That's going to get rid of his gold attack, which removes a major threat that Sceptile possesses. I still have to deal with the 151 damage that I can't cover, but I don't have to worry about the gold knocking out Will-O-Wisp or Moongeist. And I'm actually threatening the surround of his Blaziken, so he's definitely going to move that. I actually am okay with this matchup. It didn't work out for me. But I was okay with the matchup. What I'm going to have to do, though, is going to have to move Lunala. And he still has his max revive. So I can't do anything crazy. He's going to take my entry point. So here's what we're going to do. We are going to X speed. Because if I back up to protect Lunala, he's going to take my entry point. And I don't know that I've really gained a whole lot there. By going this way, I didn't get knocked out. I got burned. But and I just I felt like that was the better play for me. Although it does kind of cripple Lunala at this point. Scoop up would be nice. Some way to heal, but we don't have it. My next move would most likely be Yavetl up to the entry point and start... Making my way towards his goal. Okay. I'm good with that. Let me think of a way to knock out Tapu Coco here. And I hope that this is the best way to do it. That works. Coco's a major threat. And so by getting him knocked out, I avoid the plus 30 damage. So now Zapdos has a more difficult time knocking out my Yavetl. On top of that, my Malmar can do what it's supposed to do. Perfect. Getting some nice rolls here. He is going to be forced to 
use up his gold block. I imagine if he's smart, he'll take Mew. Because Yvettel cannot knock out Mew unless Mew rolls the 50 attack. Ooh. And now I'm going to move up here. If I get knocked out, that's okay. I probably could have just straight attacked and not given him the opportunity to set up. He chose not to set up. I do have I do have potential to win this. That's not the way to do it. And um, let's go. Oh, that's not good. Today on my Discord, we got in a discussion of do you level up Draining Wind or Dark Mist? And I say Dark Mist. I think Draining Wind, yes, it can create wind conditions, but as you saw there, and I, and for the most part, I feel like it, it hinders you more than it helps you. I don't know why I keep screwing up with Sableye. I should have gone there with Sableye and then hopped to where Blaziken is now. Instead of rushing up the lane. I don't know why I keep messing that up. I don't know why I don't have the foresight to see that. It's 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 the matchup situation. I ran Sableye up to nowhere instead of putting him in a position where he could have a favorable matchup. I think we're just gonna slide over here. Bring Lunala out on the next turn and then go after Barizion. The turn after, except he's going to close off that avenue, which I'm okay with. I actually don't mind Sableye into Viridian either. Try to figure out how I'm gonna get your battle out. The best thing would be for me to sleep Malmar or Perfect. Let's see if he tries to go for the gold. That's a very risky play if he does. And he does not. I'm going to step over here. If he chooses to take my entry point, I'm okay with that. Again, I will just attack with Lunala. Who, again, I can't lose. Unless I will miss. Now, my guess is he's going to hop over Lunala with Verizian to knock out my um, Amar. She does not do. Then he pays the price. So one more time here. Let's go for the knockout. Yep. You got to go. I'm in a really good position. At this point, I'm up almost two minutes on my a minute and a half on my opponent. I could just turtle back and play defense. <clears throat> that is one option. I have to take over my entry point or else Tapu Koko will. And then I'm not going to let them get free shots <laughs> at Malmar. 
And then my next move, I'll probably just take... Hmm. What do I want to do here? I'm going to go Phantom Energy. Because I don't want to move anybody. I need to... I want to attack Coco. Is what I want to do. Or I want to attack Zap on my terms. And my opponent's going to attack somebody with Zap here. That worked out better than expected. And because I'm so far ahead on time, there's really no need for me to attack at this moment because attacking would give my opponent the advantage. I want him to knock himself out or like this could be nice. So we will pull. Now, it, that would have been a good situation for Draining Wind to come out if I need to get a Pokemon back on the board. So in that situation, it does have its benefits. Just like on Lunala, Will-O-Wisp has its benefits. That gold is a lot larger than that. Let's go here. Miss. And he rolled gold anyways. I Karumba. We now is not the time to start rolling misses. Like bar none, without a doubt. There are no good times to roll misses, but there are worse times to roll misses. We can deal with that. And with a confused Zapdos, that makes Zapdos even less of a threat. The, the miss becomes essentially 40 or 41. I don't know if that's a level nine or level 10 Zapdos. It looks like 10. So it's a 41 size miss. We can deal with that, right? Up up here. Go ahead. Ooh. Very, very fortunate that we didn't roll purple right there. And um, my opponent's pretty much going to have to go YOLO at this point. What I can do is I'm going to bring Lele here. I, I fully expect him to go YOLO. Just trying to knock out any and whatever, anything he can. And um, we'll hop over here. Ideally, I'd like to be able to put just a little bit of pressure on him so that he has to sp expend time trying to defend his goal. And because I do not fear Brizian at all, where it is on the board. I'm just going to let him keep pressing forward. I'm, I'm way more concerned with Lazikin. And again, I'm going to get burned. Which actually doesn't make that a great matchup against Verizian anymore. But hopefully, I'm putting enough pressure on his goal that now he can't go crazy. <laughs> Very nice. And then See so at this point he's going to actually have to respect the the threat of me being near his goal. Or not. And, um, really no need to attack there. I'm not sure why I decided to. It could have, um, ooh, look at that. That was a bad play on my part. Um, if 
very high risk, low reward. If I get knocked out, he has both my entry points. What I should have done is just moved right there and then taken Tapu Lele over to this corner because he'd had to bring Zap out to right there. It ended up working out and we are going to get a nice little victory. It's a good win. Definitely take it. I think Care Bear has a really nice deck here. Um, and I'm not just saying that because I helped him build it. I actually do think it is a, a solid, solid deck. It has some weaknesses. But let's see what we get in our locked booster. A rare. That's a cool. A Weedle. A rare metal rare. And I do want to, I, I have a game recorded, not recorded, I, I have a game ID of a match that I played earlier today. So I'm gonna pull that one up. It tends to move a little faster, so I'm gonna kind of commentate, but it's not gonna be a true play-by-play. -play. So give me just a second to load that up, and then you can see it one more time in action without it taking the full length of a game, if that makes sense. I absolutely love the search feature. It is something that should have been in the game from the start, and I'm very glad that they have it in the game now. So here we go, Hutch, which is a 3300 player. Again, I don't have a runner, so I have to trigger a plate. I immediately block off his Gengar Rush. And I don't know if he didn't realize it, Because when the game actually played, he paused there for a second. I don't know if he thought he was going to take over my entry point. Two hurdle jumps. <laughs> I actually found that kind of comical. Going to bring out the Tapu Coco to complete the rush. Oh, but wait. Tapu Lele is going to stop that. Now Yvettel is, all my dark types are doing plus 10 damage. Which actually means that Inke could conceivably win some rolls. Because it goes up from 30 base attack now to 40. I mean, it's not great, but still possible. As you can see, my opponent kind of had a one-track mind of Entry point, entry point, entry points. And then I, I imagine that is pretty much how his entire game, his entire game plan goes, is capture entry points and try to get a couple wins. You really turn your game into a luck-based game more than strategy by doing that. But um, at 3,300, Obviously, he has some success with it. <laughs> it's so nice when you get up against an opponent who wants to do the Gengar Coca Rush and your deck completely walls that. That is. Because what it does is it's going to completely throw your opponent out of whack. That wasn't cool. Never like losing those. And then we're going to get a paralysis drop down. Typically, I like to save the max revive for NK slash Malmar. In this situation, I thought it was more important to bring Lunala back out. Ah, oh, yeah. The lovely, lovely miss. And at this point, I'm actually cool with cycling through because it's gonna take, I have to, I have to get Inke to the PC, through the PC, and back out on the board. 
before my opponent closes off all of my entry points. Very good roll right there. Look at that. Now, the, the Dark Mist is what allowed Sableye to pull off that, that knockout. Otherwise, I would have been knocked out there and that would have been bad, bad news. I believe Tapu Koko is going to roll several blues in a row here, if I'm not mistaken. And, and like I was saying yesterday, my opponent has Tapu Koko on the field, but that still doesn't mean that sleep is irrelevant because Coco can't be everywhere on the board. And um, right now, Ho-Oh is trapped back on my side of the board and, and asleep. Essentially, I have a five on three going at this particular moment. Very fortunate. I think I actually get a couple of fortunate rolls with with Inke against Gengar. <laughs> That's two misses in a row, I believe, that have gone into dodge. So definitely can't complain about that. There's three misses that I've rolled where Gengar has not been able to land an offensive attack. A physical attack, I guess, is the better terminology for that. Finally get rid of Coco, which even hinders his ability to wake up Ho-Oh. I mean, I finally knocked out Coco, so it hinders his ability to knock out Ho-Oh, or wake up Ho-Oh. And on top of that, Inke comes up with the first non-miss and knocks out the Gengar. Like I said, it was a very fortunate roll there. I had a few good rolls for sure. I've got the, the chain levels over the Zapdos. I have the entry point. He doesn't have a gold attack. It proves Proves successful, no doubt. <laughs> that would have been very bad to get knocked out by Magikarp there. And I think you guys know what's happening, right? So there you go. That wraps up the game there. But it just further goes to show that don't just because there's a figure that counters something that you want to do for example i wanted to i want to run malmar because i think it's a good offensive attacker i think it's alternate attack of sleep is still very beneficial and as i said yesterday a lot of people went away from malmar in fact they completely dropped it when Tapu Koko came out, he was like, well, if you can't sleep things, then what good is it? But I hope, in, not so much in that first match, because it didn't really play out, but in that second match, you saw my opponent had Koko. And I think in yesterday's video, my opponents did not have Tapu Koko. But in this one, my opponent did have Tapu Koko, and I was still able to sleep two of my opponent's figures, and that actually turned into aiding my ability to win Yes, I did get some favorable rolls. You have to have favorable rolls to win. But I think you kind of see that hopefully this proved to you that if you have a figure and you're like, well, I can't use it because everybody runs insert Pokemon here and that completely counters this. Like there's Pokemon that counter everything and you can still run your deck 
and the figures you want, even if they're hard countered by something else. And don't be scared. That's going to wrap up today's video. I hope it's insightful. I hope it's helpful to you guys to see the different hybrid decks that I, I'm starting to put together. I hope it's insightful to see me using Pokemon that, yeah, a lot of these are meta Pokemon. The Lunala is definitely meta. Sableye is meta. But nobody's really running Tapu Lele. Nobody's really running Inkay or Malmar. Maybe a handful of people are running Yvettel. Several people run Sableye. And then if they're doing Psychic decks, then they're probably running Oricorio. But on a whole, I would say that the majority of this deck are Pokemon that you aren't typically going to see in a day-to-day -day match. I hope that gives you guys ideas for deck creation. I think there are a ton of decks out there that are yet to be discovered. And if you want to, there are links, as always, in the description below. But if you want to, head over to my desk, my Discord into the deck building page and, and brainstorm. Kick ideas off of people. And don't get discouraged when someone says, well, you can't run Malmar because everybody runs Tapu Koko and he wakes up sleeping Pokemon because that's not true. Ask for advice, but at the end of the day, take all the advice you have and then use your best judgment on whatever it is that you want to build. That's my advice for today. So until next time.